There's something about this story that has boiled my blood on a scale that I can't remember happening. And I remember, I get quite cross about politics. Indeed, Waterstone's Piccadilly at the moment has my book on display saying in his characteristically angry fashion. Uh, that made me angry. I, how dare they say my characteristically angry fashion. It's an incredibly well-researched and measured book, dripping with uh, clever gags and witty asides. But no, for Waterstone's Piccadilly, admittedly it is in the recommended section, but to say his characteristically angry fashion makes me sound some sort, some sort of pastiche. Makes me sound like a character on the late great Steve Wright's radio show. But I, 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 I gauge anger. I, pi I pitch anger. I deal in anger. Because there is a lot to be angry about. And I'm just thinking now, right now, about the moments, the, the enraging moments. I, listen, so the unlawful prorogation of Parliament, right, when they sent J-Dog to lie to the late Queen, that was grim, but it didn't make your blood boil because you didn't really know what prorogation meant. You didn't really understand the gravity of the offence because our media is so bent and biased and it was being done by the Tories. It wasn't really being explained to us in the way that it needed to be in order for us to understand just what an appalling dereliction of duty and breach with parliamentary convention Rees Mogg and Johnson and Cummings were undertaking at the time. So that was quite enraging. I got quite enraged when they tried to rip up the rule book after Owen Paterson was caught breaking the rules. The more I read into that, the angrier I got because it really was a conspiracy by the establishment to get one of their own off the hook for offences that would have seen anybody else um, in extremely hot water. And, and all of the people who complain about the establishment but are actually in it sort of joined forces on this occasion to... Uh, to do something absolutely it's not beer it's it's the new water it's the new water that comes in cans it just sounded i thought i'd be able to do that quietly it sounded like i just cracked open a tin of stella at five minutes after 10 on national radio didn't it we won't be doing that again can we get bottles next time keith can we get a little plastic no we can't get why not they're not environmentally friendly and this is this is made of meta oh i see all right, I digress. So I got cross about the Owen Patterson story because it seemed to me to sum up so much of what was going wrong and what was going on. And, and the imp there's the word I'm looking for. Do you know what the word is? The word that is bubbling beneath the surface of my emotions this morning. Do you know the word that really gets my goat? Impunity. Impunity. Impunity smuggles so many different issues into the conversation, doesn't it? I don't know why I think so often, probably because it happened in this building of Diane Abbott messing up her sums about police funding or something like that when she was Shadow Home Secretary and had about as much chance of becoming Home Secretary as I do. But she messed up her, her, her sums and, good God, people still talk about it. Imagine a Conservative... You saw Laura Trott just a month ago not knowing what GDP was while being Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Impunity. The way that a bent and biased media has allowed right-wing politicians to get away with metaphorical murder. It drives me nuts because it robs us as a population of anything that remotely resembles objectivity. And without objectivity, there's no democracy. An uninformed vote is not a proper vote. A vote based on misinformation, lies, bias and propaganda is not a proper vote. It is essentially a box ticking exercise on behalf of the people who control the flow of information and the flow of news. So impunity is the word. And it's even got a word where you can you can say it with it with contempt, can't you? Impunity. It's one of those words that allows you to stretch your lips and contort your face so that you physically convey the emotion that you're feeling. Impunity. They have impute. I'm turning into Jonathan Pye this morning. I apologise. That's why. Why should I apologise? Man's a genius. That's why the Michelle Donnellan story boils my blood. Impunity, impunity, and the the congregation of circumstances that sums up so much of what has gone on in this country in the last fourteen years and more, coupled with the knowledge, stroke, fear that nothing will happen. Would you like me to run through the facts before you tell me whether or not I am right or wrong to consider this story to be one of the worst stories of our time together? Because I think I cut my angry teeth, if that's a phrase that I can use without sounding ridiculous, during the MP's expenses scandal. Even though it was broken by the Daily Telegraph, the thing that was beautiful about the MP's expenses scandal is that it allowed you to judge the political class 
equally. The right-wing media couldn't turn it into a story that only affected left-wing politicians. The right-wing media couldn't pretend that it was only Labour politicians who had been availing themselves of absurdly generous allowances in circumstances that the rest of us would have balked at through basic morality. In retrospect, I was being a little bit unfair on some of the politicians involved. Don't laugh. I, seriously, if you arrive in Parliament and someone takes you to one side and says, look, we can't really ask for a pay rise because the public wouldn't wear it. So what everybody does is use their second home allowances and use their expenses to essentially augment their salary rather than simply provide living expenses. And it's all done on a nod and a wink and everybody's at it. So you must join in and you mustn't feel bad. And I think not to excuse it, but to explain it in those circumstances, it was probably a little unfair to get on such a high horse about what they were doing, uh, with a few exceptions. You know, paying, asking us to pay for your stables to be heated, like Nadim Zahawi did. Um, Nadim Zahawi, who had to resign over his tax affairs and, and his uh, e e e economy with the actuality, but still I hear his name cited on TV and radio without anybody mentioning the reason why he uh, got drummed out of his last job. It's extraordinary how these reputations are rehabilitated if it's a right-wing politician. We're back to that word again, impunity. Nadim Zahawi manages to preside over tax affairs that stank to high heaven, but suddenly he comes back. I think he was at the Kebab Awards. Uh, impunity. Impunity. These people have impunity. So the expenses is the last time I felt like this. The expenses is the last time I felt like this because it, it just seems to me to be an example of, and, and I'm afraid this doesn't apply to left-wing politicians, but however much you might want it to, however much I might want it to, it doesn't apply to Labour politicians. If a Labour politician does something wrong, the right-wing media will not shut up about it. It, it is uh, almost, I mean, the Diane Abbott example. She should have probably more coverage in some quarters of Diane Abbott drinking a mojito on a train, which she wasn't supposed to drink and a member of the public took an intrusive photograph of, than there is of Laura Trott not knowing what GDP is, or this story today, Michelle Donnellan. Um, I, I mean, let's just pause for a minute to think about what it would feel like for an ordinary person to be accused of backing Hamas in the immediate aftermath of the October the 7th terror attack. That the, the murderous rampage on Israeli soil undertaken by members of a, of a death cult in circumstances that chilled the blood of any vaguely sentient observer. And then Michelle Donnellan, the Secretary of State for Science, takes to Twitter to essentially accuse an academic whose name I'm not going to mention on air for reasons explained perfectly by the journalist Poppy Wood yesterday, who did the most to bring this story to light. Accusing them of supporting Hamas. I, 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 listen, as a kid, because I had a, an apostrophe in my name, people would say I supported the IRA. And it hurt, actually. It's long before I grew the ludicrously thick skin that you have to have to do this job. I mean, it's such a horrible thing to say. Whether you, I, I, whether you take it seriously or not, it's still a hurtful thing to say. It's, it's not saying you're not sufficiently supportive of Israel or you're not sufficiently sympathetic to the Jewish people. It's saying, you see those rapists and murderers over there? That's your team, that is. That's what these people are saying. That's what she essentially said. Secretary of State for Science. Speaking about a professor at Harriet Watt University. Uh, accusing a professor of backing rapists and murderers. That's the point, isn't it? It's not that she's said you're not very good at sums or she said you're, you're, my dad's bigger than your dad or you're a smelly poo-poo. She's accused them of being on the same side as murderers and rapists responsible for one of the most horrific terrorist atrocities in living memory. And a secretary of state in our country, in our cabinet, this is a, this is a patriotic issue, our cabinet, our government, our country has a senior politician in it who can malign an independent academic, not on vaguely reasonable grounds for criticism, but as a supporter of a rapist death cult. And she's still in her job. She's still in her job. It gets worse. 
So legal action was brought against this Donnellan woman and uh, a settlement was reached. A sum of £15,000 was paid without admitting any liability. And let me tell you, unless you have got pockets as deep as the Mariana Trench, taking legal action against people who libel you is an almost inconceivable luxury. You might find a lawyer who is so convinced of your rectitude that they will take on your case on a, on a no-win, no-fee basis, knowing that you will win and therefore um, receiving their recompense at the end of the process. But otherwise, even if you've got a, a, a fair old scratch in the bank, you need to crowdfund or you need insurance or you it is absolutely punitive even to contemplate taking legal action against people who libel you. Some people who do quite a lot of libeling have transferred all their assets into their wives' names. So even if you did want to sue them, there'd be no point because when you got your damages at the end of the process, they could plead reasonably that they have no money because all their assets are in their part. I mean, it's a horror, it's a minefield. It's an absolute mess. So settling without any admission of liability is possibly a consequence of one member of this action having the full support of the British government and one member of this action, the maligned party, the libeled, the appallingly, disgustingly insulted, having to rely upon their own resources. Because it gets worse. A sum of £15,000 was paid without admitting any liability. This approach is intended to reduce the overall costs to the taxpayer that could result from protracted legal action, no matter what the result would have been. OK, so who paid the £15,000? You, me or Michelle Donovan? Secretary of State for Science. I know it's hard to keep up. You may not know her name. You may not have it at her fingertips. I think she might be married to someone who got a PPE contract, but I would have to double check that before saying it for certain, because otherwise I'd be running the risk of a, a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of the offence that she committed against this academic. Who do you think paid that bill? £15,000. You, me or her? Accusing an independent academic of supporting murderous rapist terrorists from a position of governmental power, from the seat of power in this country. Who do you think paid the bill? You, me or her? I'll give you a clue. It wasn't her. It was me. And it was you. £15,000 of public money paid in damages to an academic professor, an independent academic working in a prestigious university accused by a secretary of state of supporting the rape and murder of October the 7th. I am absolutely staggered by this story. Truly, truly staggered. And, and yes, I know the history. I know the other examples. I have chronicled, I hope, almost all of them. I, I have them uh, uh, like in a mental Rolodex in what passes for my brain. I can pull the story out and give you chapter and verse on it. And the bit of the, this tale that we've missed, where do you think the original hor horrific allegation came from? Tufton Street. One of these opaquely funded lobby groups calling themselves think tanks or educational charities and infesting and infecting every single level now of media and government. So 0345 6060973 oh, is the number that you need. And the question that I have for you this morning, and, and there is almost a desire in me for you to tell me to calm down. All right. Uh, this is not the story that you think it is, James. These are not the droids you are looking for. This is not the example of impunity beyond all expectation or precedent that you consider it currently to be, all right? Or you can tell me two things, whether or not you agree, and then I want you to have a crack at explaining me how the hell we've ended up in a place, how on earth we have ended up in a place where this can happen, because it gets worse. It is understood the payment was the only one made with no extra contribution to the professor's legal costs. So the Department of Science, Innovation and Technology won't tell us what 
the Secretary of State's legal costs were, and I presume because the prospect of a long, dra- a long drawn out legal case was terrifying for the victim of this appalling slur, that the fifteen thousand pound settlement was taken after fairly robust negotiation. So she's not even picking up the legal fees, which I presume were done on a no win no fee basis. So I'm speculating completely, but I don't imagine much of that fifteen grand is going to make its way into the pocket of the libelled professor. But we live in a country where a secretary of state can accuse a professor of supporting rapists and murderers in a public space, can refer her to authorities, can publish the letter of accusation on social media. And when it turns out to be an absolute pile of crap, she stays in her job. How can that be? How can that be? 03456060977. Three is the number that you need to tell me why I'm wrong, why I'm right, and if I'm right, how this happened. How did we end up here? How did we end up here, right here today, here, with a Secretary of State? That accusation, from that position of power, with this zero consequence. Hit the numbers now, you will get through. 03456060973.